good morning guys welcome back to another day in the life video just to start out to be honest i was not gonna make this video because things just did not go as planned this morning however we're gonna do it because this is a realistic day in the life of a commercial underwriter with three kids so I'm gonna get in the car and get headed to work. This is my first day back at work after maternity leave. I have all these plans to just get up, film, do my makeup, but with a new baby. She said, what? Nah, we're not gonna do it that way today, mama. We gonna cry. We gonna cry, we gonna get up, and we gonna make sure you feed me before you leave. So I'm leaving out late. I will get into all that when we get in the car, but Yes, guys, we are back at work and I'm taking you guys along with me. Welcome back to another video, guys. I am actually doing a day in the life of a commercial insurance underwriter. I am back at the work vlogs, which you guys love so much. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who has stuck with me during my maternity leave, watching my maternity leave vlogs. But I am back to the original content that is on my channel. Today is the first day back at work after 12 weeks of being off. And I actually am excited to be back. Now I know I will be walking into chaos. I know this for a fact, so I am mentally prepared for the chaos. Um, and I'm just trying to navigate through how to deal with it. Um, so before I went on maternity leave, you guys know I talked about the workload at this job. And don't get me wrong, I, I love my job. I love what I do. <clears throat> I like the company I work for. Um, all of that. It's just a lot of work. The work was not, how do I say this? The work was not done appropriately while I was gone. I don't know if that's the right word, appropriately. Um, because, I mean, they did what, what they could do. At least this is what I'm told. <laughs> the person who took over my lines of business, they did what they could do in their capacity to the best of their ability. However, now it is a lot for me to clean up, which, I mean... At the end of the day, I know I can get it cleaned up. It's just like, ugh. come on. Come on. <laughs> so the agenda today at work is to just get with the contract underwriter who took over my lines of business. And we're gonna come up with a game plan on how we're going to catch up on all this back work that has not been done. Um, also, my supervisor did send me May renewals and pretty much said, you know, there's a lot of tasks that have not been done and then there's May renewals. So between you and the contract underwriter, there's plenty of work to do, you know, basically figure out who's doing what. So that's my plan today is to sit down and make a game plan to get caught up by the end of the week. And I mean, y'all, we're catching back. We're catching up from February and it's about to be May. all I gotta say <laughs> so I'm gonna get off of here and pray before I go into work like I said y'all I had a plan y'all I set my clothes well I didn't set my clothes out last night but I set everything else out I got my work bag thank god I got everything else prepared but I got my work bag prepared last night I got my um breast pump machine prepared <laughs> bag prepared last night um I had my makeup, all, everything was just set out for me to have just, I don't even want to say a seamless because nothing is seamless when, in the grand scheme of things when you have a newborn. But my plan was to get up at 5, I was going to pump so she would have fresh milk. Dre got in at 5 this morning, oh no, he got in at 5, 40 something this morning. And so he's super tired and so... My plan was to have milk pump for him so that when she wakes up, because she will wake up or does wake up for a morning feeding, all he has to do is turn over, get the bottle, feed her. However, she started fidgeting and things 
you know, while he went upstairs and around this time in order for me to get to work on time, which is seven o'clock, I would have to leave at 6.30. I didn't leave till 6.57. So she started to wake up. So I went ahead and woke her up. I fed her. She had a little bit going back to sleep. So I didn't have time to do makeup or anything. I literally had time to pump, feed her, make my hair look like something and put some clothes on. Thank God, you know, I took my shower last night. So, yeah. And I'm not going to let that stress me out because I have far better things to worry about <laughs> today than was I able to wear makeup. But I think I look pretty decent. I think I look nice. I went and got my hair done yesterday. Just a nice little fresh press on my hair. And we are back at work. So, I do have a new schedule. Well, my schedule is still 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. However... As you guys know, prior to maternity leave, I was working three days in the office, which was Tuesday through Thursday. And then I would work. I was working two days from home, which is Monday and Friday. Well, now they have allowed me to work three days from home and two days in the office. So my days in the office will be Tuesday and Wednesday. And then of course, if there is a meeting scheduled for Thursday or in a company event, or something that the CEO or the underwriting director wants the employees to be there for on Thursday. I will go into the office on Thursdays. Um, they're going to keep the schedule for me until the end of the year. And then after the end of the year, they will reevaluate company needs, how it worked out, me being at home three days instead of two. And if all is well, then they can see this being a little bit more permanent after the year is up. So that's a quick spiel and update. I'm gonna try and film as much as I can today while at work. And then I will also be incorporating a few work from home vlogs into my channel as well. But yeah, we are headed into the office. Welcome back, Mallory. Welcome back. Right now it is 6 30 and I am making dinner. So we went to Sam's like a week and a half ago and we went on the day they were doing samples and they were sampling these little steak strips, y'all. They were so good. So we're having this for dinner tonight. I think I'm gonna just cut up some onions and then cut up the steak and make some rice and some sauteed broccoli and we're gonna call it a dinner, okay? Say hi. I had to pick up Pally. She wanted to say hi. She missed mommy today. Dre texted me while I was at work and said he heard her yelling downstairs at the garage. Mama, you missed mommy today. Oh, I missed you too. She wanted to say hi. But yeah, I'm making dinner. Something super quick and light. And then I'm going to sit down and talk to you guys about the pros and cons of underwriting. And this was prompted by a comment that someone left on one of my videos. And I just wanted to go over the comment with you guys. I want to hear what you guys think. And I want to hear um, what your experience has been if you are in underwriting. And I'll tell you what my experience has been as far as pros and cons. So uh, let me finish dinner and then we'll chat. Okay, so I'm sure this is what you are here for, okay? You want to know the pros and the cons of underwriting. So I'm going to put here what prompted me to talk about this subject and it is a comment that was left on one of my YouTube videos. This person starts off saying, 
I'm not sure if this will help anyone, but I stumbled into underwriting. I graduated during the 2008 recession, so finding a job was tough. My first real job was a bank teller. From there, I worked at a call center for one year and realized it wasn't for me. I had about six years of banking experience before I got my first job as an underwriting technician. The best way to explain it is when an insurance agent has a client who wanted coverage, they will send in an application. That application is just sent to a general mailbox for each type of insurance the company offered. The technicians go through the emails, check the system for any issues, and then set up the underwriting file for the underwriting to review and quote. After two years, I was promoted to an underwriting assistant. Another two years, and I went into compliance, state regulations, and helped create and write company-specific policy forms. From that position, I changed companies and became an underwriter. It was about a 13,000 pay raise increase. After five years, the stress of that job led to me being hospitalized. That is not hyperbole. That is not, yeah, what does that word say? Sorry. <laughs> or an exaggeration. My organs started to fail and I had to have an emergency heart procedure. Listen to your body and trust yourself. If the stress is too much, leave. Do not sacrifice yourself for a job. I think with the right company and the right team, underwriting is a good job, but please do not try to get into underwriting just for the money. It is not worth it. Okay, so that in a nutshell is a lot. <laughs> but what she stated is very, very true. We work because we have to, right? Unless you work for yourself or are an entrepreneur, you extremely love, you know what you're doing, you make your own money. Majority of people have a job so that they can live. It's a means to an end, right? And personally, how I am, at this moment in time, I don't have a desire to be an entrepreneur, to work for myself. I don't know what I would do. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing that I'm trying to push or be ambitious about to have as my own type of business. I am comfortable with working for corporate America right now, period. And that is okay. So I will not be doing something that I hate doing or something that stresses me out completely to the point where it is messing with my mental health. It is messing with my physical body. If it comes to that point, like this commenter said, deuces peace out and if you watch my career path video I did talk about when I worked for um, Liberty Mutual in their call center department I was completely stressed out and said I couldn't do it anymore when my contract was up I left and went into underwriting thankfully there was an opportunity which jump-started my underwriting career with that said <clears throat> I know that I like doing underwriting and I have worked for companies where the workload is not as much as it is right now. Or I would say it's not, um, it was more manageable than it is right now. However, the company that I work for, I really enjoy working for them. It's a lot of great benefits, monetary benefits, um, social benefits, things of that nature. Is it a lot of work? Yes. But to me, the work is easy. So it's not to the point where I'm so stressed out that I will get to a point like this commenter was, but you know you, you know what type of person you are. So let's go ahead and just start with the cons, okay? Let's start with the downside of underwriting. The downside of underwriting is that yes, majority of the time, you can be overworked. You really can. Um, Right now, specifically, there is a need for more underwriters. And with some companies, there are a lot of turnover because for some reason, it just trend-wise, it appears no one has figured out how to have a good flow going to get all this work done, okay? <laughs> so people get stressed out and they leave to go where they feel like the grass is greener. And then you have employees left with 
the person that left work and so it just piles up. Process and procedures are different and so typically there is a lot of work. With that being said, if you are an underwriter, nine times out of 10, your supervisor, if you're not micromanaged, okay? If you're in a micromanaged underwriting situation, um, I feel sorry for you. I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. But nine times out of 10, I, I would think that if you're an underwriter in like the middle profession, senior profession range, your work is your work. You don't have someone standing over your shoulder. You don't have someone do what you get done is what you get done. And you're responsible for getting out what you need to get out in the proper time. Okay. So with that being said, if you're continuing to get just loads and loads of work, it sometimes just seems like you can't keep up. And that my friend is a, a horrible feeling. I know for me, because I like to be at a pace where I'm caught up and sometimes it just seems like you cannot get caught up. Um, depending on what type of underwriter you are, we have field underwriters that go out into the field. You have business development underwriters who kind of go into agencies and um, do the marketing and all that plus underwriting. Then you have producer or producing underwriters who have more of an added pressure to perform, really. They're monitored. They have goals as far as, of course, every place has goals, but I guess you could say metrics to be met, goals to be met as far as maybe um, premium goals, things of that nature. And that could add stress depending on what type of carrier you work for or if to you those goals are, are not realistic. Thankfully, in my role, it's not a role where I am required to... Um, produce or have a certain amount of premium. Now, when I worked for Allstate, I strictly did new business. That's all I did. I didn't do cancellations. I didn't do endorsements. I didn't do renewals. I was a new business underwriter. So I did have a premium goal I had to meet. Um, and thankfully, I had my time management down packed and I was really good with the different carriers. I knew their underwriting guidelines. I knew their quoting systems that I was able to really review quotes quickly. And we know in the insurance world, when you get a quote out faster, more likely you will get that bind, okay? So <clears throat> in this role, I'm just responsible, really, I'm responsible for a lot more. So I have to do endorsement. I don't do the endorsements. I don't do the cancellations, but a lot of things come past my desk for review. So I have to review these things and approve you know, them or say, hey, we need more information. And then on top of that, I am responsible for new business quotes, reviewing, approving, declining. I'm also responsible for renewals for my book of business, workers' comp and general liability. So that is a lot of work, a lot of work for one person, okay? Thankfully, like I mentioned in my update video a couple videos ago, I did have a nice, a pretty nice salary increase where it makes doing all this work a little bit more worthwhile. But still, it is a lot of work. So you can get stressed out. That is a downside. There is stressed out times, but how stressed, how stressed do you allow a job to make you? Is the stress worth it? You have to ask yourself, is the stress worth it to you? Because some people, the stress is worth it to them. The stress is worth the money to them. You don't want to do it for the money. If that's what fuels you, that's what fuels you. I can't tell you what fuels you. But you don't want to just beat yourself into the ground because you're making a lot of money and everything else is suffering, okay? So that's one of the downsides. I mean, it is a lot, a lot, a lot of work. Another downside to underwriting is underwriters somewhat have a bad stigma about them, okay? <laughs> I'm going to put some memes up here just so you can see what I'm talking about. Now, I will say, there have been some underwriters in my career that have been coworkers that I've dealt with that have been extremely difficult. And it's like, you don't got to be that difficult. You're just being difficult because you feel like you have a little bit of authority. And, sir, ma'am, what? So sometimes you get this bad stigma and agents either may be leery to really ask for what they need or... They may be very, very just bold and somewhat rude because they feel like they have to approach you that way. 
um, because they feel like they're going to be met with the same type of countenance. And that is not true. Okay. <sighs> does it happen? Yes, <laughs> it does happen. I can't lie and say it doesn't. I mean, some people really let certain things go to their head. But at the same time, when you build a rapport with people, okay, when people know you for your work, your work ethic, and this is how, this is how I operate. If you work with me, I will work with you. If you don't make things difficult for me, then we can be friends. You know, just give me what I'm asking for. I mean, you want this quote, right? You want me to approve it? You want me to accept your client's risk? Then just, just give me what I need and be nice about it. That's it. I'm not going to think about any more downsides because they're, there really, in my opinion, aren't that many downsides. The main one is just the overwork and the a lot of work and the um a lot of work. <laughs> Let's go into the pros. So we all know, we all know. Okay, we're just gonna get this out the way. The pro to being an underwriter is the money. It's good money. I mean, for a corporate job, it's good money. If you are an underwriting assistant. It is good money. Once you put your dues in and you're working at least three years, anything over three years, you are making pretty decent money, especially now that there is a demand. There is a demand for underwriters. I mean, I get in my LinkedIn mailbox, maybe two or three opportunities daily, daily. Okay. But unfortunately I can't do anything about it right now because I'm stuck in for a contract for a year after being on maternity leave, but that's fine because I'm not, I'm not looking to leave right now. I'm learning a lot from this job, a lot. I'm getting paid, you know, in a way where I'm very comfortable. And I just know it's not time for me to leave yet. However, saying that the demand is out there, the demand is definitely out there. The money is good. But like we said, is it worth it? So if you get with a company, that has their stuff together and has their process and procedures great where there's a smooth, a smooth flow. Awesome. Now I think this commenter said that they got applications that went to a central mailbox and they divvied out yeah, how they did that. I did work with a company that did that before, but that's not how we do it. Now we have things assigned to us and we have our own task box and we're basically responsible of how we schedule our day. So pro, the money is good. It's good money. If you have worked as an underwriter and you're over five years in the profession, excuse me, you could be making anywhere from 80 plus, okay? If you've been working in the field seven plus years, you probably are in the six figure range. Um, underwriting jobs right now, especially senior underwriting jobs are going anywhere from like 115,000 up to 150,000, depending on what line of business, how many lines of businesses that you're doing, if business development is included. I mean, and that's just base salary. Most jobs do have underwriting jobs. You do get a bonus, a lucrative bonus as well. So, I mean, money is the pro. The pro is the money, okay? Another pro to underwriting is you do have a respected title in the finance or insurance industry or field, okay? It is a very well-respected title. Um, you do have a lot of authority. And if you're that type of person that likes that type of thing, it goes to the head, great for you. <laughs> but you have decision-making power. And if that's something that is important to you in a job, that is definitely a pro. You know, I like being able to make the decision like yes or no. And at the same time, the company has hired you to make sure you factor in loss control and loss ratio. So that's one of the things that I look at, especially with workers comp and reviewing claims and things of that nature. Like, what do I, what do I, you know, project that this company will do for us? Will they be profitable? Now we know insurance is there for the claim to be filed if there is a claim. It's insurance, okay? We expect to pay out, but at the same time, what's the caliber of people that you hire? You know, like what what what's going on? So if you like the decision making aspect and having authority and you know those type of things, that's definitely a pro. I would say it's a pro. Another pro is 
to being an underwriter is I feel like you could really get a job anywhere, okay? Especially now with remote work and hybrid work, um, there's more of an opportunity for you to live anywhere in the United States and have an underwriting job. Now, if of course, if you live in a small rural town where, you know, there's no bigger city close, then no. But nine times out of 10, if you're living in a big city or near a bigger city, you can work anywhere. So if, you know, say your husband wants to move for his job or you want to try a new location, nine times out of 10, you're going to find underwriting opportunities, especially in major cities. But if you're close to, and if you aren't close, they have remote opportunities because this type of work you can technically do from home. So in a nutshell, those are my pros and cons of underwriting. If you're an underwriter, let me know some of your pros and cons, okay? Let me know some of your pros and cons. I love the feedback from you guys about your experiences with underwriting. Congratulations to everyone who is applying and getting interviews as underwriting assistants, associates, underwriters. Congratulations to those who have landed the job. I have commented back at some of you guys that have landed the job in underwriting. Congratulations. I hope you love it and enjoy it because I love it here. I, I like underwriting. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.